Oh, is it just me? Or are these boxes getting bigger? That's what she said. Hello and welcome back to another Nihongo Gamer video. I've got myself a great big whopping box and inside this box is probably another box. But inside that box, probably another box. But inside that box is probably an arcade stick. And this is not a brand new arcade stick. This is a stick that's been around for some time, but I didn't try it until now and I'm going to tell you the reason why. So actually the main reason I ordered this stick is that it has finally gone down in price. And when I say gone down in price, it, I actually mean it's become the price that it used to be before there was a pandemic. So a lot of things started being shipped differently, obviously because of the pandemic certain flights weren't going and certain things weren't being delivered and just the prices of things skyrocketed for a, lar a large number of gaming products and electronics in Japan. And one of them was arcade sticks, a large number of arcade sticks that w used to be sold quite, you know, easily, you could easily find them in many shops. They started to get harder to find. Uh Okay, ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on this. It's the Hori Fighting Edge Arcade Stick. It comes in one of the largest boxes that I've ever unboxed, apart from obviously that Hatsune Miku arcade stick for the, for the music game, but that's not an arcade stick for a fighting game. This is probably one of the largest boxes I've ever seen for an arcade stick, and it's because this stick is even more inconvenient than the Quanba Obsidian for being a stick that's too big that doesn't really fit in your bag but there are some major differences to this stick. So I'm told that one of the things about this arcade stick is that it has what's called a noir layout, and I've never played an arcade stick with this layout, but there are certain benefits to it, apparently. But apart from that, the main things are that it's a premium looking stick, it's got bits of metal on it, and the parts are made by Hori themselves. So it's a Hayabusa arcade stick, with Hayabusa buttons, as opposed to Sanwa stick and Sanwa buttons. But just looking at this picture, it probably doesn't look any different to any other arcade stick that you've seen. So, let's compare. This is the stick that I've been using the most recently. It's the Kwamba Obsidian, and it's got an arcade stick, and it's got buttons like this, right? Man, this stick is filthy. Hold on. Ugh. So one of the main things that you'll see that's different about the Hori Fighting Edge that I'm quite excited to try is that these buttons are laid out in what's known as the Vulix L layout, or maybe just the Vulix layout. Six buttons flat like this, with two buttons slightly lower. And the reason this works really well is that when you're sitting at your arcade stick, your arms come forward and then they angle in, like this. Perfect arc. But apparently there were other people who thought otherwise and thought that looks stupid with your arms bent in like this. You should have your arms more out like this. They should come out from beside you and straight forward like this. Well, I don't know. The idea is that instead of having these buttons go straight across like this and only the curve down here, it actually curves all the way around in this arc. And I'm absolutely certain that this is just gonna feel like playing on a, typing on a keyboard, which I already find not very ergonomic. Anyway, apparently they have made various adjustments to the positioning of the lever and these buttons so that it actually does feel quite natural. Let's go ahead and get it out the box. Just so you can see it clearly, this is the box. It's an arcade stick for PS4, but I think that all of these official licensed PS4 sticks. Supposedly they all do work on the PS5 as well, so I guess the theory is that if you buy one of these now it'll still work on PS5, but hey, I don't have a PS5 and you probably don't have one either because all the scalpers bought them. Pull on these tabs here, rip this open like so, and there it is. Get it out with the... Oh, there we go, get rid of these things. Plastic bags can be dangerous to avoid danger of suffocation. Ah, whatever. Rip the plastic off here. Okay, this part I want to be careful with because I don't want to scratch the front plate because you will see it's this super nice brushed aluminium. Woo! Oh, that's shiny. Hey, hey. You get this shiny brushed aluminium finish for $200 as opposed to this stick, which is like $350 to $400 for brushed aluminium. Of course, it's gunmetal gray and you can get laser engraving on it and it is very flashy indeed, but it's like double the price. So for the comparatively lower price of $200, you could get this. It's the Hori Fighting Edge and it's super shiny. It's actually quite nice. Style-wise as well, going for the black buttons with the silver surrounds, that's quite stylish. It is absolutely humongous though. It's not too thick, it's actually a very nice sort of level of thickness this way, but just this plate here, it's it's very much trying to emulate being that massive plate that you sit at when you play at an, at an arcade machine. And I'm pretty sure that some of the design for this stick was either done with the pro player, Sako, he's a pro street fighter, he's a legendary Japanese street fighter player, 
They either designed it with him or they stayed closely in contact with him while designing it so that it would be a comfortable stick that he would want to use because this is kind of like his signature model. They've even got a model where he's like inscribed his name in the aluminium here. To be honest, it's the same lever that I've got in my Hori RAP. I believe that this red stick here, the Toho Project stick by Hori, I'm pretty sure that's got a Hayabusa lever in it. And also this one, it used to have, <laughs> it's actually called the RAP Hayabusa, I forgot about that. It's a real Arcade Pro V for Vulix, but it's also, it used to have a Hayabusa lever in it, but I was, I was transporting it, so I took it out. But yeah, I should be used to this stick already because I've owned, I own three of them. I have one thing that I want to take back from the arcade stick video when I made when I made a video about this stick here. It's the Hori with I it's got Hayabusa. Actually, it's got the exact same hardware. It's got Hayabusa lever and Hayabusa buttons in that stick back there. But I replaced it with Sanwa buttons. And at the time, I was just spewing nonsense like, "Oh, it'll be easier to double tap with Sanwa buttons." And maybe it made sense to me at the time. But now that I've been playing for a few years on various arcade stick with Hayabusa buttons and Sanwa buttons and Gamer Finger buttons and even just the buttons that come stock with a Quanba drone. Like, literally, it's the same for all of them. You can double tap on any buttons, really, as long as your technique's not bad. They're actually coming back to it. Your fingers do slip off these buttons more quickly. So if you want less friction, I'm tempted to feel like maybe these have less friction because of the textured surface as opposed to the painted finish of normal Sanwa buttons. But essentially this is the stick. It's absolutely massive, but it's not too thick. It's also a very reasonable weight. It's not overly hefty, but it's very solid feeling. All right, just turn this camera on so you can see the levers here and the buttons here. And the first thing I'm noticing is that yes, my hands are definitely closer together than I think is necessary for this layout. I think the whole idea of this layout is that on a Vulix stick, your hands come in at an angle. And then once they're like this, you're at the right angle. But with the Noir layout, I guess the idea is that if your elbows are closer in together, then they come straight out of your body. And then this is a nice, perfect, perfect angle for your hands. But the truth is no one's elbows are actually this close to their chest. The elbows usually come out naturally like this and then they angle in. I'm gonna be honest with you. I want my phone, I want the finger, I want the buttons to be here, but instead they're here. I'm not feeling it. Who knows, maybe I'll change my mind after I've sat down with it for a little bit longer. But let me just take you through the rest of the stick first. We've got this aluminium plate on the front. It's got the buttons, the stick, it's got the options button, which is a slightly smaller, but Hayabusa style button. It's got the PS options button, which will still be useful even on PS5, I believe. And fortunately, because the options button is up here, you don't have to reach around to the side of the stick to reach the options button. So if you're using these shortcuts in training mode for, you know, resetting the stage or other useful shortcuts in your in your games. Fortunately, there's only three buttons in a row like this. On some of these other Hori sticks, there's like six or seven buttons in a row on the side of the stick. So like, if you don't actually look around like and have a look at the side of the stick, like you're not going to know which button you're pressing. You're not likely to be pressing L3, R3 and share that often, I suppose. But then again, R3 and L3 are pretty useful when you're in training mode. Speaking of training mode, you might want to use this. It's the touchpad button and it's on the front of the stick. So you'll be playing with your arcade buttons here. And then every now and then when you're in the middle of training mode, you'll want to reset. You just reach over to the front of the stick and press this. Now this is really common. It was the same on the Mad Cats TE2 Plus. It's the same on this. It's the Quanba Obsidian. It's got the button here at the front. You just reach over to the front and you press it. Um, this wrist rest doesn't really make much difference. The only thing is that if you happen to play with the stick slightly tilted away from you on your lap, like this, then it does help to have this angle here and not a sharp edge so it doesn't dig into your wrist. So that's kind of nice, but I think it's not gonna make too much difference. This is not like a super functional wrist rest. This is just like, if you are tilting the stick away from yourself a lot, then it's going to slightly dig into your wrists a little bit less. And more important than all of that is the bottom. Now I'm quite happy to announce that there is non-stick padding almost all over the bottom. Now personally, I would have liked it if it were here in the middle, just so we could go with the meme all over the bottom. But the truth is this pad here and this pad here are super huge. And I think it already 
it already feels less slippy than the obsidian. So this is the obsidian and I was, to be honest, not that impressed because there was not much padding on the bottom and I thought it wasn't gonna bother me too much, but the thing is, this is currently my favorite stick to have on my lap just because it's nice and long. But length isn't everything and I have noticed that my legs basically sit somewhere around here, partially touching the non-slip padding, but this non-slip padding really doesn't have any effect unless you're on like a table, but on your lap, this padding really has almost no effect whatsoever. My initial impression of the non-slipperiness of the bottom of this stick is looking very good indeed and feeling very good indeed. And in my lap, not going anywhere. So before I get into testing the stick, I'll just give you a nice little close-up of the stick here. It is, it does, it does look very, very slick indeed with the aluminium and it's nice bright brushed aluminium as opposed to the sort of dark gunmetal grey aluminium of the Victrix Pro. And the branding is nice and subtle as well. You know, it says hoary, but very, very lightly on the front there and fighting edge. And you know, who doesn't think that Chinese characters don't look cool, man? Look at these. Yaiba. You can even tell people that you know what it says now. It just means like blade or something. Isn't there an anime about yaibas or something recently? Kimetsu no? I don't know, it's probably some param anime or something. <laughs> and I've just noticed this. I didn't realize this until I was just flipping it over and admiring the bottom, but it has grip handles on both sides here. So there's a grip here and a grip here. So you can hold the stick like this. That may not sound important, but when the, well, the sticks are pretty heavy and actually tournaments are very, very crowded. And most of the time you'll find that you're just like holding your stick like this or in a bag. And being able to have your stick on the, on the ground and able to pick it up quickly. I think that's actually kind of important. So you'll be like standing around with your arms crossed going, hmm, yeah, nice DP. And then you'll be like, oh crap, it's time for me to actually play my match. You wanna be able to pick up your stick nice and quickly. And this one actually has a nice carry handle so you can like pick it up off the ground nice and quickly. So actually, Kudos, kudos for putting a handle on your stick. And it's also not really obvious. It's not like a Steve Vai Ibanez RG, what is it? The RG550, I can't remember which one it was. Like, it's not one of those guitars that neon pink and it has a handle built into the design. Like you don't see the handle until you flip this thing around. I'm not gonna go too much into the details of these buttons, but it's got tournament mode so you don't accidentally press pause in the middle of a battle, a sign so you can rearrange the buttons to do different things. If you want L1 to be here in the middle, or you want triangle to be here on the far right. Maybe there are games that don't let you set it in game. You can do that on the stick. And for games that need analog stick emulation, you can press this little switch here to be left stick, right stick, or the D-pad. L3, R3, share. So the more that I flick this thing around, spin it around, the more I want to just play with it because it's nice and sturdy and I feel like I would be quite happy to have this in my lap as soon as possible. It's just, I'm very, very nervous about this layout because I, I'm sure that I'm gonna want my hands to be like this, but instead I'm gonna have to tilt my wrist like this and I'm, I'm feeling kind of anxious about it. So let's stop looking at it and let's just plug it in and play. It's the Hori Fighting Edge Yaiba. I really hope I'm saying the right word. There you go, Yaiba, Forged Blade. All right, I've got the Hori Edge sat on my lap here and it feels nice and comfortable. It's not going anywhere. It's a nice length. The actual place where you can actually put it on your lap, of course, is slightly smaller than what you see on the top of the stick because it comes in where the handles come and your legs actually are a little bit closer together than you might be able to do with the Quambo Obsidian. But in terms of surface area for resting your hands on, it's actually very, very comfortable, even though most of the time your hands will actually be here in the middle. Now, as I suspected, it does feel a little bit strange coming from a normal Vulix layout where the buttons are actually aimed to be played at a more of an angle like this. I'm either having to move my elbow in a little bit like this or have my hand come in at an angle and then bend my wrist a bit like this. And I think it feels a bit strange, but we'll, we'll see if I can get used to it. Plastic door feels a little bit less flimsy than the one that comes on the Hori RAP. But I mean, it feels, it still feels flimby, flimsy, but not quite as flimsy as the one on the Hori RAP. Um, if we try and throw it from here to the guitar. Oh, it makes it pretty much all the way to that wall and probably a little bit further if pushed. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can move the character around. One thing I did notice just from picking up the stick immediately is that there's actually a bit of a manufacturing. It's not really a defect, but it just kind of feels a bit cheap. Just getting used to the Hayabusa stick again. And about these Hayabusa buttons, I'm not sure if it's just like placebo effect or something, but it does feel like they have slightly less travel than the Game of Fingers or the sun was. 
But then again, I don't know if that's a- I don't actually know if that's a good thing, it's just like a preference thing. I think either way, basically, if this is the only stick you own, you just get used to it. It's just like, oh, I thought all sticks were like that. Alright, let's see if I can get used to this weird noir layout. Just looking at my input history to see if it's any cleaner than usual. I'm just wondering if maybe switching to a higher booster stick has magically made my execution better. It feels a little bit like it's got more inertia. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. It feels like a little bit clunkier. But this isn't really a comparison of the Hayabusa versus the Sun. This is a, a comparison of the Noir layout versus the Velix layout, really. And just the stick in general. First things first, it feels really nice in the lab. Like, really, really nice in the lab. It feels really weird that the buttons are not in the right place. I keep wanting to put my hands like this, but I have to bring my hands slightly slightly down to actually press them in the right place. But, you know, it's only been a few minutes. Years of practice on a single layout is not going to magically change, I suppose. Interesting. It does feel different. It's almost like the gate is is bigger. So like the gate, I think like the gate is bigger than a normal Sanwa gate. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And also, I might, I might just be making it up because I'm not used to it. I feel like I've spent more time trying to get used to this Hayabusa lever than I have actually getting used to the to the stick. But I'll tell you what the main thing I'm feeling about this stick is that. I don't know, I don't think it's really a fault of the stick, it's just that I'm so used to having my hands naturally come in at this angle like you see right here. Just not used to not having a button here, right above where the R1 is. The other thing I miss is having L3 on the front of the stick. Having to reach over to the side of the stick to reset the game is kind of, kind of annoying. And using the touchpad is okay, but the thing is, because the touchpad is is the way it is in Street Fighter V, like right here in the middle, it will go to the middle of the stage. But if you like go slightly to the left, it will reset you to the like left. And most of the time, I just want to be reset to the middle of the stage. But it's like getting to the actual middle of this touchpad here is actually kind of tricky. If you're like accidentally just a centimeter to the left, then you end up on the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen. It's just like just stay in the middle. But yeah, that's a that's a knock on any stick that has a touchpad built into it, I suppose. I'll tell you what, I quite like the Hayabusa lever now. I think maybe it's, I'm not sure if I'm just making this up in my head, but it feels like it feels like the gate is wider and you have more space to do more exaggerated motions. Interesting. Huh. That's interesting. Not what I expected today. I wasn't expecting to kind of convert myself over to a Hayabusa lever. Alright, I haven't played this game for like a million years. Alright, so the last time I played this was last week and I was trying to teach myself how to play Blake again, but this time using a, a, a pad controller. So I haven't played this game on stick for about a year, but we'll see how things go. Alright, let's see. Hayabusa stick feels okay. Instant air dashing. Of course, in this, in this game it's actually you don't really need to do instant air dashes because you can just press forward jump and A, B. Certain combos with Blake you have to do instant air dashes with the, with the lever only, so it's worth remembering how to do it in case the game comes along that you still need it. This Hayabusa lever has actually got me slightly con <laughs> slightly convinced. It could just be that I haven't used anything as the Sunwa lever for so long that I'm kind of like, ooh, something new, that's nice. Alright, let's see if we can do that combo that I was learning on pad the other day. <laughs> Sorry, every now and then I look down at my hands and my hands have slightly drifted back to the Vulix position. I'm just not convinced by this this noir layout. Alright, finally! I'm gonna be honest. Um, after practicing for a few minutes there, trying to get myself to actually do that combo for you, um, I actually came to quite like this stick a lot. I still don't like this hand position. I still don't like the idea that my hands don't- my hands naturally want to come in like this and just sit and rest on the stick, but instead for this stick I'm having to either bring my elbows in a little closer or have my hands come in and then tilt my hands a bit like this. But there's something nice about the feel of the, the tappiness on this this piece of plastic. Now I believe that these buttons, they are resting on this piece of metal, this aluminium here. So if you've never bought an arcade stick before and you just like the idea of having something that feels a lot like an arcade machine, 
then definitely something like this, which has a really wide plate here on the front, does give you that I'm sitting at an arcade machine feel and it's because you know when you're moving your hands around and just pressing all the buttons and all that it's just it's cool to the touch but it's not too cold like this room is actually quite cold right now maybe the stick will probably get quite cold as well but at the moment it's not feeling too bad maybe it's just because I've been playing it for some time now it is still cool to the touch but then again, if you've got really sweaty hands, maybe you'll actually quite like that. The other thing that I wasn't expecting is I wasn't expecting to like this Hayabusa lever as much as I am. So to be honest, it's something about the combination of the Hayabusa lever, the Hayabusa buttons on this stick with this aluminium plate and this big flat teppan griddle <laughs> feel of this stick. Like you could, you could probably cook a meal on this stick if you wanted. There's something about the impact of these Hayabusa buttons. It doesn't hurt that badly. Maybe it's because it's got less throw. I think that's one of the main takeaways, is that with a stick, you can't just go, okay, it's got Sanwa buttons in it, so it will feel good. And you can't say, oh, it's got Hayabusa buttons in it, or Hayabusa stick, and so it will feel good, or it will feel bad. It really is the combination of all the parts combined, with your parts combined. I am Captain Fighting Edge. The fact that these buttons, they're like springy. There's something nice and springy about them without having to push too far to activate them. And there's not too much impact. I don't know what it is, maybe it's because the spring is extra. You don't feel like you're slamming down as hard, or you feel like less impact when you slam them down. I don't know, the combination of this solid, it's not hollow feeling, but it's definitely not like a slab of metal. It's a sturdy feeling piece of metal with a, a bizarre sort of noir layout. And this Hayabusa lever, which to be honest, I'm getting kind of used to it, I'm kind of used to, I'm quite used to it, I quite like it now. Yeah, I like it. If you want this hoary lever and these hoary buttons, I actually don't know how easy they are to find them in parts shops. So how easy it is to get replacements, I don't know. There's always been one thing that sort of confused me about hoary parts, is that if you really like these parts and you want to buy spares, so that when you go to a tournament and one of them breaks because you've been practicing hard, it's like, okay, I need to replace this button right now. Where do you go to buy another button? It's like, I don't know if Hori sells them. I like how this stick, it just doesn't want to go anywhere. It's just like, I'm sitting in your lap right here and I ain't going nowhere. All right, and last but not least, I want to play a little bit of Undernight just because this is the game I've been playing the most and definitely of all the fighting games that I've played, Undernight is the one that really opened my eyes to like, all the things that I haven't been doing, I don't know if the word is correctly, but very in a, in a very disciplined way. This music's so good! Okay, hold on, getting carried away with the music. Now let's muck about with Merkava, shall we? Huh, interesting! I definitely feel like this lever has a longer throw distance, and that actually might be better because you're, you're more sure that your hand has actually definitely moved into one of the nine positions. There may be disadvantages to that that I just haven't thought about yet. And I definitely have trouble with this because this involves a dash, but let's see if this stick magically makes it easier for me. Interesting. I remember having trouble with this one. Wait, I don't think I've ever managed that one before. What? That's weird, I think I- mm? Might not be specifically that the lever's better, but it could just be what I needed. Let's see if the same magic happens with Seth, shall we? I took Seth online recently and it was a travesty. Oh, I'm gonna miss. Oh no, it didn't, good. All right, now the, now the brain the brain hurting ones. Here we go. Whew, okay. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I did that in like 30 seconds, and that took me like an hour and a half on stream the other day, and I just couldn't get it. I I I'm I'm not I'm not gonna put a verdict out there because I've only been playing on this stick for like, I don't know. 
20 minutes so far, but still, because I don't use my Hayabusa sticks very often, I just completely forgot about forgot about this. And also, I've been only really thinking about my execution a lot recently because of this game, Undernight Inbirth, and especially this character, Seth, he's been stressing me out. But this, I was doing this combo on stream the other day, and I'm, I'm sure it took me like an hour. I, I swear I'm going to end up taking this all back. I'm going to find out that I was completely wrong, and this is all 100% placebo effect just because I opened up a new stick, and I was just excited, and every time I, something good happened, I was like, oh, it's because of the stick. Might not have been, but whatever, whatever it is, it feels good at the moment. Yeah, I just did it twice. This definitely, this is definitely feeling really good right now. Well, there you have it. That is it for the Hori Fighting Edge. This stick is, in my opinion, very reasonably priced. It's a, a little bit more expensive than you were expecting for your first stick. But if you go for a stick like this or the Quanbo Obsidian, so you're spending maybe, I don't know, 50 or $60 more than you were expecting for your first proper size stick, this feels really deluxe, and it's because this panel is nice and big. And when, you, when you sit it on your lap, it's like you've got all this nice surface area to play with, and it feels really good. The other thing is that I was not expecting to like the Hayabusa lever. I was just like, okay, well, if I want to try the Fort Fighting Edge, I'm going to have to use Hori parts. The thing is, mixed with this stick, these kind of low profile buttons with the nice springy feel, I feel like I, I wasn't having a lot of impact on my fingers. I played that, that whole time and I, my fingers were never like, oh god, I wish I could go back to my game of fingers because these, these buttons hurt my fingers. Like, not, not at all. Like this, this metal, it's, it is aluminium, but it's not hard, hard aluminium. It's absorbing some of the shock. Of the of the buttons, so it's not like when I was playing on the Victrix. The Victrix, in combination with the Sunwas that are shipped with it, like they really hurt my fingers when I was pressing those buttons. But the Hori Fighting Edge, these Hayabusa's work really well with this aluminium plate. And the spacing, I'm not 100% sure if I'm down with it yet. But this is again the first time I've ever used noir layout in my entire life, and I've only been at it for like, I don't know, 25 or 30 minutes to shoot this video. Not keen on the placement of L3, R3 and Share. I honestly think they would be fine to have put them up here, but that would make it more expensive. They'd have had to cut more holes in this aluminium. So I think that's a small price to pay. It feels like you've got a pretty big arcade panel sitting in front of you. And of all the sticks I've used so far, I would say that the Fighting Edge that I've got here and the Quamba Obsidian here, these sticks are both, I think they're kind of like really in competition with each other. These sticks are both $200 and they both have this nice wide aesthetic. I think you can see that the Hori Fighting Edge is ever so slightly wider, but the truth is the because of the base of the Hori Fighting Edge, you actually have less surface area to rest your legs on. Whereas if you go for the Quamba Obsidian, like you've got the entire base. All your base are belong to your lap when you go with this stick. But if you know a place where you can actually go online and buy some new buttons for this stick as spares so that when you go to a tournament, you're not panicking about if a button breaks and you have nothing to replace it with. Or if you also know where you can get replacement Hayabusa levers, then if you, if you can get used to this noir layout, and to be honest, in the half an hour that I've been playing with this, I did get used to it. I don't know if it makes sense and it's not the layout that I would choose naturally. But I'm gonna give it some time. I'll play with this stick a little longer, maybe on the next stream or something, and then I'll update you with my opinions after that. And if I don't have a chance to update it during a stream, I'll update you in the comments section of this video down below. Talking of which, what do you think of what you've seen of the Hori Fighting Edge? And have you used one yourself? Do you like this stick? And how has it treated you? Let me know in the comments section below. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, of course, click the subscribe button to this channel. That would be great. And if you click the notification bell, you'll also hear when new videos go online as soon as they do. And if you want to hang out and talk about arcade sticks, people are always talking about arcade sticks in the gear chat section of the Nihongo Gamer Discord. Link is in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch. We do live streams all the time. We also do live streams here on YouTube. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.